Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to show everyone how to boot one of their iMacs, an older iMac, off of a um, NVMe drive. So if you really want a really fast boot drive and you actually don't want it connected or don't want to open up your iMac, go ahead and stay tuned. Let's go ahead and take a look. Alrighty, so if you've actually followed my videos, I've done this like three times now. I started with a 2011 iMac and it was basically, I, I put a, a very specific uh, Lacey drive, SSD drive, connected it to, booted the Mac OS off that drive, and that 2011 iMac is super fast. Um, you know, obviously way faster than the spinning drive. The computer behind me is also, I bought this, this is a 2017 iMac 27 inch. It basically had a fusion drive, which only has a small amount of uh, flash storage on it. So the first thing I did is I bought a QVO drive recently and I created an enclosure for it with a one terabyte and I booted off of that. And I have a video that I can link to in the description. If you want to check that video out, definitely do it. But this time I'm actually going to be doing something and, and I'll put a link to the, the, the actual drive. But I also did a video, I just made, uh, it was an inland drive and it was a 500 gigabyte inland drive. Uh, it's basically a NVMe uh, M.2, 3100 megabytes per second on the reads and, and 1900 on the writes. Super fast drive. So I created an external drive. I actually showed you how to do it. 500 gig this drive plus an external enclosure for less than $100. I showed you guys how to do that in the last video. I'm going to boot my OS on the iMac behind me on that. It's going to be really cool. I'll show you exactly how to do it and then basically how fast it is at the end. So it's gonna be a lot faster, you know, because you, in the spinning fusion drive, you only get a little bit and then it slows down. With this one, it's gonna be a lot more IOPS. I think it's like a couple hundred thousand IOP operations per second on this, uh, you know, this drive versus the, uh, you know, the fusion drive. So also it's gonna be, you know, can, you know, sustain speeds instead of just dropping off after so much. So stay tuned, we're gonna get into it. There's a lot of positives to it as well. Um, if you guys can support my channel, it's gonna really help me out really quickly. Um, subscribe, I'm gonna do a couple giveaways for some drives and stuff coming up. I only have, you know, less than, I have 500 subscribers, so you have a really good chance of winning. I want to get up to a thousand, so just even if you watch me every once in a while, please subscribe. And let's get into it. I'm going to show you how to do this, and uh, it's going to be an adventure, but uh, it's really cool to watch. All right, so I'll show everyone how to do this. So earlier, and check out some of my old videos. Um, obviously, I'll link them in the description, but I did create this SSD drive, and I'll show you a picture of it right here. But in any case, I built this out. It's got an MVNE drive. It's a basically an inland drive from Micro Center, 500 gigabytes. I bought it for like 50 bucks only for 500 gigabytes of NVMe storage, super fast. Rated at like 3,100 megabytes per second. Um, writes and you know reads are around the same thing. So long story short, it's a very fast drive. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and try to boot from this. I'm going to show everyone how to do that. Um, but make sure you have that drive built first. Go back and check out some of my other videos if you haven't built the external drive yet. So I'm going to start from the beginning. I already kind of formatted that drive. I'm going to do it again just so we're you know on the right page here make sure that we have the, the drive formatted the correct way so here we are on the screen here let's go into your launch pad down here and then there's disk utility here so go ahead and click on disk utility and you want to bring that up um, so inside of here you can see I have three different drives set up in here and again this is the drive I'm on right now Macintosh HD that's my basically spinning slash SSD but that's the uh, you know the fusion drive which I it's not at the fastest so then I have these other drives this SSD one terabyte is a drive that I created before and I was booting off of that in another video check out that video this NVMe is the one I actually created the other day and uh, long story short I just wanted to uh, you know basically show you guys how to boot off of this now but I'm gonna reformat this just so everyone can see how to do this so once you actually um, connect the drive you're gonna get to this screen and you're gonna find you know you definitely want to find that drive all right, again, the first step is to find the drive that you just connected, the one that you want to boot, you know, to install the new Mac OS onto and boot from that. So make sure you don't pick your main drive and make sure you don't pick some other drive because you're going to erase it. So make sure absolutely you pick the drive you just plugged in. In this case, it's the NVMe SSD, so I'm going to select that one. What I want to do is I want to go up to erase, and again, that should, this should warn you, you're going to erase this. So I'm going to go ahead and erase it. Um, so I'm going to click erase. You can name it something else again. Just make sure it's Mac OS Extended Journal here. And then you want to go ahead and click Erase here. Um, and let's go ahead and go ahead and get that going. All right, so basically it erased everything. It's going to ask if you want to use it as a backup drive or anything like that. I'm just going to say don't use. I don't want to use that as a backup drive. And then I can click right here. It's going to say uh, you're done erasing it. I'm going to click done. And now that drive is ready to go. It's going to basically say it's got 511 gigabytes free. And it's basically just a completely stagnant or, you know, drive with nothing on it right now. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, and then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you what else is here in a second. So let's go ahead and close out of Disk Utility. So I reformatted that drive, it's just sitting over here, but I reformatted that. So the next step here um, that we wanna do that's basically gonna be to now getting the OS installed. So earlier I had showed everyone in a prior video, but make sure you do this. Um, you have to install install Mac OS Mojave. Uh, this is a 2017 iMac I'm doing this on. So you want to have an icon down here, and so you have to go and find this, and you can go out to the store and find this. Go through the Apple Store. It's gonna ask. It's gonna say like you already have it installed on your other computer and stuff like that. But still, just download it, and you're gonna have an icon, so it's kind of a copy of it here. Even though I'm running it on this disk drive right now, I mean I need a copy so I can install it onto my new external drive. So once you have this icon here, and you you know you have it kind of in, you know not installed, but you know you have it basically um, an icon like this where you can do various installs of Mojave you just basically click it and once you click it um, what it's going to do is it's going to come up with a screen that says Mac OS Mojave to set up the installation of Mac Mojave click continue now again we're not we don't want to screw with the main system that I have that you're looking at right now I want to actually install this onto that external hard drive so I'm going to click continue right there and uh, it's going to go through some stuff and it's going to ask you to agree and things like that so you you know you want to agree to that and then you want to agree again now this is the this is the kicker part this is the part that you have to be absolutely positively sure before you click anything if i was to click install right now it would install right over my macintosh hd which is the one built into this which is the fusion drive you do not want to do that <laughs> you would have re erased that again i mean so always back up your files always do all that stuff before you do any of this stuff always back up but anyway so you wanted to go down here to say show all disks so I'm going to go ahead and show all disks, and uh, and basically now I have my three disks that I talked about before, and the one that I actually want to basically install this Mojave onto is right here, NVMe SSD. That's the one I just erased. So there it is. All right, it's going to ask for the password, and give me one second while I do that. All right, so once the password is installed, we can go ahead and get going on this. It's going to say um, Mac OS Mojave will be installed on the disk, and it's basically still going. So let's just see. It says about, it's going to take about two or three minutes here to get this installed. Now, this may actually still be working on my actual screen share, but eventually in a second here, it's going to cut us off. So we'll see how the best way to do is to, uh, you know, we'll see if this is the best way to, to record this or not. Um, but in any case, I want everyone to see what's happening here. So we're going to kind of, you can skip ahead, obviously. This is going to be about two minutes, it says, remaining. So this takes a little bit of time. And uh, But long story short, I want everyone to see the entire process. So in case they run into issues, um, you know, it's obviously pretty straightforward for them. So let's go ahead and um, wait this out. So it says right here, your computer is going to restart. It's done installing it on there. So I'm going to go ahead and restart it. This is where we're probably going to lose everybody. So we'll switch to the other camera. So anyways, it's basically going to go through the boot cycle here. And as you can see, I'm in this big glass mirror here. I got some lights behind me and things. So, um, But basically, it's going to go ahead and reboot your system. Now, during this time where you're actually waiting for it to basically install onto the MVNE drive, the external hard drive that you installed um, the OS onto, um, it's going to take a little bit of time here. So let you know we'll wait this out. We'll speed this through the uh, miracle of video editing so it's not as slow. It shouldn't be that, you know, that slow, though, because this drive is extremely fast that we're installing the OS on. To um, keep in mind, though, that you're going to see some weird things happen here, like blank screens and black screens, and you know sometimes you don't think things are coming back, but just wait it out. Uh, I promise you, over time, it'll definitely take care of itself, and things come back. Um, a lot of times, I get worried that maybe something may, may not be working correctly, and uh, and then at the end of it, it all comes back fine. So just wait it out. Wait for this to load. All right, so once that's done loading, it took a lot longer than I thought, but it finally finished. Um, basically, you want to go into here, and basically, if you look here, it says welcome. So this is going to make you have, you know, you have basically have to set up the Mac now just as if it was a, a brand new Macintosh or an iMac. So go ahead and do that. I'm not going to film this because obviously there's tutorials on how to set up a Mac. Just follow the screens, and then basically it's going to boot into the OS on your SSD drive, and I'll follow up with a screen share next. All right, so now the screen actually came back up, and now I'm actually booting, or I'm actually running right off of that uh, external MVNE drive. So basically, again, I used an inland drive. It's 512 gigabytes. If I go up here in the upper right-hand corner really quickly, 
and I, and I click on get info on this drive, right click on it and click get info. Um, obviously you have to set up your right click first, <laughs> so that works. Um, it says right here that I had 519 gigabytes total on that drive. It's got 492 gigabytes available because I installed the OS on there. So everything looks good. So now I'm running right off of that external drive. Um, my other two drives that I have, both my Fusion drive and some other external drive I had plugged in, nothing, you know, those are just now external drives, um, but I'm running off that external, um, you know, really fast NVMe drive. So it's an M.2. So let's go ahead and just try really quickly how fast this drive is just to kind of show everyone a little bit about this. So I always do a couple little things. Let's First, let's go ahead. I actually went ahead and I downloaded some of this stuff prior to uh, launching this. So um, just because obviously this hasn't come standard, but I just downloaded Blackmagic. So in Blackmagic now, let's go ahead and open that up. Now I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit slower, but what we want to shoot for is we want to shoot for, we want this to be faster than the actual, um, you know, Samsung Evo or uh, QVO drive I had tried before um, because this should be this is actually an N NVMe drive and it should be faster Now granted we have a connection in here that's limiting the connection plus there's going to be some other stuff um, That's probably limiting the connection also, but let's just see I mean obviously the fusion drive again I had talked about this before it might actually benchmark with the uh, black magic here faster But it's got a really small cache of 30 like 32 gigabytes and then it gets really slow and Then it goes back to a spinning drive. So this is always going to be SSD and and it's got a huge number of IOPS. Don't forget that operations per second. So it's a lot faster than just what the megabits per second actually um, tell you. But let's go ahead and click on this right now. Make sure that we're running off of the M and a V drive. Click on it. Look at that. So right now we're getting about 830, 833 megabits per megabytes per second on the writes. And we're getting um, nine, uh, close to 900 on the reads. So we just clicked out of that really fast, uh, completely off that external drive. Things like, uh, let's go ahead and load Chrome here. One, I mean, basically not even one bounce on the actual screen and it's basically coming up. Um, obviously your, your internet connection is gonna make a huge difference on how fast things come up on the system. So, um, but basically everything should be really fast in here and everything should load really fast. So this is the first time I'm actually loading everything. So it might be a little bit slower. That's gonna be the case here. Um, Let's just go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, download iMovie here just so we can check how fast that is. So give me one second. All right, so now I have iMovie loaded right here, down here. So let's go ahead and see how fast it loads iMovie. And then I'll click on it again. Generally, it's gonna be like one or two bounces. It'll open up. Um, that's about what it is for um, you know any of these things. It takes about that long to open up iMovie. So it's gonna be pretty pretty quick for sure. Um, again, you know, we just did Chrome. Chrome comes up in two seconds. It's very, very quick. Um, let's quit out of that. All right, so let's look how fast Safari is down here. If I click on it, it's basically gonna be less than one jump and it's basically coming right up and working. Um, and then you can go to any site that you want instantaneous. Again, it depends on your internet connection or how fast it is. Um, but obviously you can see how fast everything is. Let's do Chrome one more time. If I click on Chrome, bang, it's up in two seconds. And the same thing, if we go to Apple, it depends on your internet connection there, but everything's very, very quick. So. Those all work really good. I'm gonna quit out of that and then I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of Safari. So, I mean, basically, you know, you get the idea. I mean, obviously things like Keynote, I mean, this is the first time I'm opening it, so it's gonna take a little bit longer there, but um, everything's very, very, uh, you know, responsive. Uh, you know, obviously moving files around are just ultra quick. And uh, I tell you, you know, what's the IOPS that really make a big difference? So, again, this is a great way to do it. Uh, if, if you're looking to boot off an external drive, um, this is a great choice, and it's um, going to be a lot faster than a normal SSD drive. So, I recommend it, and I hope this helped everyone. Uh, you know, to see those speeds that you get, and it's pretty, pretty impressive. Alrighty, so you guys got to see that, and basically, it's uh, super fast. So, what do you think? I mean, it's basically uh, that 900 megabits per second. You know, write, read and write somewhere in that range. I've been getting, you know, different readings. I had some of them go over. 900 the one I showed you was a little bit under it um, but I don't know what what why the reasoning is behind that but it's basically between like 850 and 950 somewhere in that range um, but anyways it's way faster than just a normal SSD like the Samsung Cuvo or EVO and uh, it's way faster than my my spinning drive in the back or my fusion drive I guess you can call it a fusion drive um, in any case so you know why not do this and, and there's a couple of reasons also to why you would do this it's basically for security so let's say I, I'm now I'm booting off that SSD drive and let's just say I go on a vacation or something and I leave my iMac behind. And I have a lot of important data here. Let's say I don't want to move it to the cloud for some unknown reason, but I can take that drive, put it in a safe, just unhook it from the computer, put it in a safe. If someone stole my iMac, I could basically buy a new iMac, plug it back in, 
boot from that and it would work. Um, it's that simple. I mean, it's just crazy how you can do that. But you can also, if even if someone didn't steal it, you could take it out of the safe and then reboot from it again. Just plug it back in. Um, so it's something that's interesting, but I mean, definitely, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you have to have a reason for it. My reason is to get this a little bit faster. It's so cheap now, under 100 bucks. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my video, and I'm going to do a couple more here shortly. But I hope this one helps, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Again, peace.